Hello everyone, this is Ilonzo. Want to know how to get your first cloud job? Then please register for our webinar. We'll teach you everything that you need to know and answer your questions along the way. Hope to see you there. All right, everybody. So I know you're used to watching all this pre-roll stuff and not paying attention, but pay attention. There's all kinds of stuff happening over the next few months. We've got people from NVIDIA. We have people from AWS. We have free boot camps. So watch all this pre-roll stuff so you know what's going on. Hello everyone, this is Ilonzo. Want to know how to get your first cloud job? Then please register for our webinar. We'll teach you everything that you need to know and answer your questions along the way. Hope to see you there. Hello everyone, this is Ilonzo. Want to know how to get your first cloud job? Then please register for our webinar. We'll teach you everything that you need to know and answer your questions along the way. Hope to see you there. My name is Richard Furrow, and I can say I am cloud hired. That yes, come and try and get cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. Hey, go, go cloud architect family. I'm cloud hired. So, I'm cloud hired, guys. So I'll just say I'm cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. Thanks to go cloud architects. It worked for me. And now I'm cloud hired. Because because of Google Architect program, I am cloud hired. See! I am cloud hired. Thank you, Mike and the Glow Cloud team. Welcome back, everyone. This is Michael Gibbs, and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Careers, and I'm here to help you build your best cloud computing career. Perhaps you desire your first solution architect job or your first cloud architect job or your first cloud engineer job or any tech job for that matter. I'm here to help you get cloud hired. See, I've been working in tech now for about 25 years, ever since I left internal medicine. 
And in the last two decades, I've helped coach people to either get their first tech job, get promoted in tech, earn more money in tech, and I want to help change your life and help you get the cloud computing career of your dreams. Now, I specialize in architecture careers, like a cloud architect or a solution architect, or leadership in tech. But the point is, I've done it all over the last two and a half decades. I've coached people from a wide variety of walks of life, and I want to help you in these free coaching sessions build your optimal technology career. Hopefully, most of you guys have been joining us for the free AWS Boot Camp. If you've not joined us for this free AWS Boot Camp this week, make sure you do so. And do this basically by you know, going back, uh, signing up for the boot camp. Um, the link is in the chat box in the description below. You can watch some of this morning's episode and, and catch up on it. And so you can join us today, tomorrow, and the next day. And we're going to be running till Friday or Saturday based upon how fast we go through the content. So do the AWS boot camp with us. I promise you, even if you're AWS certified, you're going to learn a lot because we're going to take a different take on it. Now, to help you in your cloud computing career, my team at Glow Cloud Careers a team that was about 100 people strong wrote a completely free new version of the AWS Certified Solution Architect and Associate Exam Guide all in a single book. Why? They're not that different, these two exams. We don't want you to learn one thing for one exam and then have to learn something else for another lab, another exam. And by doing that, it'll save your time. The reality is all clouds are really the same. So if you know one cloud, you know them all. But uh, free AWS Exam Guide covers the associate and professional. It's a really, really strong book. 100 people's time and effort went into it. Hundreds of years of real experience went into the making of this book, and we're going to give it away to you for you completely free. So please download the free exam guide in the chat box and the description below. Now, I want to get you all cloud hired. And every Thursday, I tell you our secrets of how you get your first cloud architect job. And I'll tell you the way we do it in our context, but I'll also tell you all those things you need to learn. And if you want to train with us, or you want to go get an MBA and do some tech training on the side, I really don't care as long as you get cloud hired. And that's why I do these completely free every single week. We don't hide our methods. Now, our methods are very special, they're unique, and they take a, a huge team of highly expensive people to do it. But, you know, the point is, is we tell you exactly what we do to get our students hired, and you can do it with us on your own. So join us completely free for the webinar. The link is in the chat box and the description below. Now, of course, we want to get you all hired. And it's all Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So right now, we've got a 30% discount on every single program we have using coupon code SECURITY. The link for that is, uh, is on the video screen. My team will also put it in the chat box for you as well. Now, normally, we're here from 10 to 12. But today, we're only going to be here from 10 to 11 because we've got a 12 o'clock class. And my team has to do all the things behind the scene to make sure that everybody's free boot camp goes really strong this week and everybody gets a better experience with our free training than they would anybody else's paid training. And if you see what our free training's like, which is just certification, you can only imagine what our paid career development training is, the kind that gets you to your ultimate career. So give me a hashtag cloud hire. Give me a hashtag cloud architect or cloud engineer based upon the computer the job of your dreams and bring us your questions so that I can answer them in the next hour. Hello, Mohammed Samir. Hello, COVID tracking support. Good morning, Chow. I'm in, you're welcome. Hope to say you, you, are caught, you are caught hard. I hope you're caught hard too. And with the right training background, you will be caught hard. Your question is, which provider should you focus on to start your career? Which cloud provider? Mohammed, well, I'm going to tell you right now. If you think that you're going to learn a cloud provider and start your career that way, unfortunately, you're completely wrong. You need to learn the cloud. Now, Muhammad, you didn't say which job you want. So if so, basically, I'll tell you the skills that you need for the job if you tell me the job. Do you want to be a solution architect or a cloud architect? That's one set of skills, and you'll need to learn one set of things. But which what would you want to be a cloud engineer? Again, that's a completely different career with a very different set of skill things. I'm going to tell you right now, Muhammad, all clouds are the same. All of them. I've been working on the cloud since 1996. The first cloud was from Relay. In 1998, there was an ATM cloud. And then, you know, around 2000, there was the BGP cloud. And then around 2001, there was the VPLS cloud. Since then, we've added the data center in addition to the network. As a cloud architect, you need to know every cloud. But it's about learning the cloud 
versus learning a specific vendor. And here's the, here's the problem, Muhammad. If you were to just do like an AWS certified solution architect professional, which is very basic and about 5% of what's necessary to be a solution architect, what would you know? You would know the funny names that AWS marketing people came up with their services and how to configure those services. But see, Muhammad, solution architects don't configure services anyway. That's not what we do. And uh, what we do is we design a solution, present the solution, and sell the solution back to our customer. Now, here's the problem, Mohammed. You can't design what you don't understand. And what's covered in certification is somebody else's job, an admin's job, like a junior level admin. And we don't need admins because one DevOps engineer can replace 50 of them anyway. But the point is the admin role is just clicking stuff and clicking buttons and, and, and building stuff, mindlessly not even knowing what they're doing. That's the job of the admin. The good job of the architect is to design it, the job of the engineer is to build it and tune the performance of it. And the admin is really what's being taught in certification. So if you're an architect, you need to understand how to improve your customer's business. As an architect, you need to understand the technology that exists in their data center that you're moving to the cloud. Now, Muhammad, what is the cloud? It's nothing more than somebody else's network and data center. And if you don't know the network and you don't know the data center, you don't know the cloud at all. You're completely unemployable as a solution architect because you don't know the the technology. And you can't design technology you understand. And if you really understand the cloud, Samir, when someone tells you they've got 20,000 remote locations, which is not covered in any certification, you're going to know how to contend with that if it's in a Nutanix cloud in the data center, an OpenStack cloud in the data center, VMware's cloud-type data center environment, uh, if it's going to be on Azure, AWS, or Google, because see, it's the same thing. Now, Mohammed, let's say you wanted to build a house. You need to know what a brick is, right? Or cement is, or steel, or glass. Now, it doesn't matter where you buy that glass or steel from. You need to know the materials that you need to design that building. So if I told you the key to learning the cloud is to learn the cloud and not any cloud provider. So let's take driving. When you get in a car, there's this thing we call a steering wheel. Change the directions, right? There's a horn, we go honk, honk, honk. There's a key, which is either a push button or something we twist. There's a gear shift, there's an accelerator, or the gas, or diesel, whatever you want to call it. And then there's the brake. It exists in all cars. And when we drive these cars driving down the road, it doesn't matter if we're in a Toyota, a BMW, a Mercedes, a Porsche, a Lamborghini, a Chevy, a Ford, or a Hyundai. Why? Because it's a car. We learn to drive the car. Now, when you try to just learn, for example, a cloud, you know, AWS will call this elastic vector angular changer because that's what their marketing department is going to come up to obfuscate what the technology really is. And Microsoft people are going to call it an Azure based, you know, angular rotation device. And Google will call it a cloud based executive rotational turning device. And if you try to figure out what that is, you're not going to be able to design anything. By comparison, if you learn the way we teach it, the cloud, and you know what a virtual machine truly is and how a virtual machine is architected, well, now whether it's a Nutanix cloud or an OpenStack cloud, which you're going to be working with half of the time, or whether it's an AWS Elastic Compute Cloud instance, a Google Compute Engine instance, or Azure Virtual Machine or an Oracle Virtual Machine, you're going to know it's the same thing. So it's impossible to do the job by just learning a cloud. You have to understand the underlying technology as a solution architect. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Muhammad, a solution architect is a hybrid role. It's a hybrid executive and technology professional. Now, as a solution architect, you will never touch the technology. That's right. The only technology you're ever going to touch is Microsoft Word, Microsoft Expel, Microsoft PowerPoint, maybe a graphics program such as Visio, Draw, I.O., or Lucidchart. And that's it. That's really it. And uh, that's what we're the tech we're going to be. We're not going to touching the tech, but what are we going to be doing, Muhammad? We're going to be designing a pathway to improve a customer's business performance with technology. So there's two sets of things that you need to understand. And if you understand these things, guess what? You understand every single cloud in the entire world. So you need to understand the routing, the networking, and the data center components because they make up the cloud. And all the cloud services are virtualized cloud services. And if you know this, you can go transition to any cloud in a matter of a day. It's 
that simple to solve easy answer. An architect, solution architect, you're going to be designing across multi clouds anyway because every customer uses more than one cloud, or at least 87% do in some way, shape, or form have a multi cloud environment. So that's why can't, we can't just learn a cloud, we need to learn the cloud. So, what is the cloud? Well, it involves the routing protocol BGP from the networking side. It typically involves some degree of interior gateway protocol knowledge, such as OSPF for intermediate systems to intermediate systems. It then involves IP subnetting, supernetting, route summarization, route aggregation, for example. And then it typically involves some WAN technologies and knowing the WAN technologies that you need to use and how to design them. This includes when to use as an SSL-based VPN versus an IPsec-based VPN, when to use a private line versus Ethernet over MPLS versus software-defined networking versus SASE. And as an architect, you're going to need to make these recommendations. We're not going to touch the technology. Now, we're going to be dealing with switching and switching concepts, which means VLANs, VLAN tagging, VLAN trunking protocols. It means port channel, ether channel, link aggregation groups, those kind of things that we're going to be working with, with link aggregation groups being the modern you know, industrial standard in today's world. It's going to involve spanning tree and rapid spanning tree. It's going to involve really good knowledge of the TCP protocol, UDP, real-time transfer protocols. It's going to require a lot of knowledge in DNS, DHCP, ARP, proxy ARP. It's going to require strong knowledge on that and not less taught in these basic things like the AWS advanced networking. We're talking about one-to-one -one now, one-to-many now, static now, dynamic now, and all the use cases that you use. And there's many more use cases than just connected to the internet. Now, next on the list, you need to understand the data center part, because the cloud is basically half of what I told you, and then the data center thing. So this means you need to understand servers and server virtualization, containers and container orchestration, storage or networks, block storage, object storage, uh, file storage, and all the ways that you would do that across the data center on all clouds. It's basically the same way, but if you understand that, then you can design it. Then it's understanding the business applications that can improve performance, such as ERP systems, CRM systems, unified communications, and many others. And then it's knowledge of real security things, because we can't use the stuff that's taught in our certifications for security. We're going to be going to external security vendors, such as Palo Alto, Cisco, Checkpoint, Fortinet. So there's that. Now, Mohammed, since we don't touch the tech as architect, but we design the tech, we need to be experts on how the tech works because you can't design what you'd understand. So when everybody else is wasting their time, you know, configuring, 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 and I still recommend you configure to learn how to do it. But the key is, is we architects don't configure. Our focus is transforming the business. So it's not which cloud you learn. So I just gave you the technical piece. <clears throat> now, in order to get a cloud architect job, most people fail before they come to us. And they go get a bunch of certifications and they try to get interviews and they don't get them. When they get interviews, they fail. And here's the reason why. This job is in 50 to 80% executive position and a 20 to 50% technical position. So keep that in the back of your mind. So if you want to the executive piece, what does that mean? It means for the job that's designed, present, and sell, we're going to be interacting with C-level executives, which means you need to be trained in C-level relevancy. What does the CEO want? CTO, CIO, CFO. Now, after that, you're going to need something called executive presence. And I'll show you executive presence and lock the road. Hi, my name is Mike, and I'm a solution architect with 25 years of experience. That's no executive presence. Hi, my name's Mike Gibbs, and I'm a cloud architect with 25 years of experience, and I'm here to help you. So I personally took, I, I hate to say it, it was over $20,000 of executive presence training. And I've had an executive coach work with me for about a decade trying to develop executive presence because it's needed for this job. And I teach that for my students because you can't do it without the job. Now, next is we have to have business knowledge. Nobody's going to buy a billion dollars of our stuff because we told them it was cool. We need to show them the business value that's gleaned from the technology itself which means we need to be able to build a business case with a return on investment capital modeling and show pro forma projections and expected values. And again, we teach that, but if you don't have those skills, you can't be an architect. And these aren't skills that you just learn on the job either, by the way. These are special business schools. Now, as an architect, you know, I'm not going to be touching the tech, but I'm going to need a village and a team to design the tech. And I'm going to have to go lead a team of experts 
most architectures I work on take about 50 different engineers and architects to put the designs together, and I lead the team. So that means you need really strong leadership skills. Now, because our job is to design, present, and sell the technology back, you need really good sales skills in three places. You're going to be selling your stuff to the customers, and if you don't sell as an architect, you're fired and you're, you'll be escorted out by security, and your replacements will say, thank you so much for the nice job. So you've got to know how to sell to them. Now, you're also going to have to go sell the teams inside of your company. When you get put on a project and the project's worth like $300 million, you're going to have to build a business case and potentially reach out to your own company CEO and say, I need these 50 people who each cost $200,000 a year for the next nine months for this design and proof of concept. So that means you're going to have to sell your internal management. And, you know, the next thing that we're talking about that you need to learn on top of that is you're going to be selling the people that don't work for you to want to work for you. Now, this is a finesse role, the solution architect job. It's not a, t a techie job. It's all about your soft skills, emotional intelligence, and, and those things you need training. I can't even tell you I've got a total of a quarter million dollars of training in these skills that we're even talking about right now because this is there. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Now, because of this, you're going to be presenting at conferences because you're going to be presenting to C-level executives. You're going to be presenting to engineers. You're going to be presenting to management. And if you don't have these skills, guess what? Again, you can't get the job. You could do engineering jobs, but uh, keep that in the back of your mind. Keep that. At, so those are the kind of things that you learn. Now, Samir, I know everybody says they want experience, but I got to tell you, we can show you video after video after video after video of mental health tech that's gotten their first solution architect job. Or like uh, Yvonne Tambo that was on our show a few weeks ago that was a college student working as a waiter before he got his first solution architect job. Or there's a video on our channel of Coyote who got his first solution architect job. Or Jermaine who was a landscaper in his last job. Or Delroy Bat who there's a video on my channel who, uh, for example, was an EMT taking people back and forth to the hospital who got his first job. But the key is they all had the right skills these are the right skills to being an architect. You're not going to get there by getting certified. I can tell you that right now. In my opinion, what is the best way to navigate, select the right answers for the exam while taking the exam? Easy. Read the questions with an attention to detail and answer them with the correct ones. These are simple exams. I mean, really, really simple exams. Now, if you're taking one of these certification courses, which is the name of the service and how to configure that service, and then they actually ask you a question which goes deep, you're going to find it. But, you know, recently I had a person do the Certified Solution Architect Associate and Professional with less than six weeks on my program. And they, and in fact, I had one student who did a CCNP, the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional, the Azure Solution Architect Expert in the Oracle, whatever they call their professional certification, and she did it in less than a month. And she's like, Mike, oh, my God, you're right. These are silly easy when you actually understand the club. So my, my perspective is this. Read the question and answer. It's not that hard. Now, I will tell you that I do recommend a practice exam. Look, our world is about getting people hired. That's what we do. That's what we do. We get people hired. We do the certifications free on the Internet because we saw what those certification providers are watching. And honestly, they should pay you for the torture. And we have to retrain 90% of the students that come out of these programs to forget everything they learn and then learn properly. And I don't want anybody to be forced to do that. So that's what we do, our certification online free. But if you're looking for more certification guidance and help with the exam, in addition to our free book and our free course, I recommend Andrew Brown at ExamPro. He specializes in certification. And he's not like one of those people that just gets 10x certified and then is going to write a bunch of courses. He's got a good, strong professional team that does proper research, that adheres to the curriculum. And, you know, I do a cloud hire training. He does certification training. We respect each other very much. I send lots of people to him when it comes to certain materials. He sends lots of people from me to me for career advice. You know, great person, great product. So if you wanted more... I'd look at Andrew Brown as an exam pro. His basic course is free as well as ours. He's got another course that's got a practice test. I think it's like $20 and it includes his course. That's what I would do in addition to ours.
Muhammad, exactly. Get the skills. And then you can pass one of these exams in a matter of days. Because without the skills, what good is the certification? Alonzo on my team likes to say you can't catch a certification check at the bank. But that's really the case, Muhammad. And it's about having the skills to get hired. Now, I do like certifications. Most people think I don't, but I do. Certifications create the illusion of competency or fake competency. We hiring managers know that a certified person doesn't know how to do the job, but it might give us an inkling that hopefully they know something. So we use the certifications to often get people that first interview. Although we can get people interviewed in hard like Delroy Bat with zero experience that have zero cloud certifications. And you can see his video here on our TV show, on our YouTube channel. But you know, there's that. But the key is, I like to view the knowledge as the cake and the certifications as the icing on the cake. That certification will help you get that interview. But once you're in there, it's up to you. It's up to your knowledge. It's up to your competency. It's up to your leadership skills, your presence, your attitude, your energy, your enthusiasm, your passion. It's up to that. It's up to that. So that's how you get hired. But yeah, skills first, certification second. Because, you know, you can pass one of these certifications in days when you have the right skills. And the reality is you're never going to do an all AWS thing if it's a real architecture anyway. You're never going to do an all Azure. You're never going to do an all Google. And how do you design something across multiple clouds if you only know the names of the service and how to configure it? You don't. And that's why every single course that people take, which is based on learn by doing, and there's a lot of them out there, I want you to really understand the challenge. A cloud architect is no different than a building architect. We design a blueprint for whatever the customer's needs are. And let's say I want to design a beautiful five-star hotel. I'd call an architect, right? And I tell the architect that I'd like to have a thousand rooms and I want it to be on beautiful Singer Island, Florida. And I want to have a penthouse and I want to have a helipad. And I want to have three pools, for example. And uh, this is what I'd like to do. And we'd like a golf course and a five-star restaurant. Now, me as the building architect, I'm going to go dream up that plan. I'm going to go create those blueprints. But you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to be part of the construction crew with hammer and nails, nail guns, glass, plumbing, landscaping. That's not my job as the architect, the designer. Now, what's wrong and the reason people don't get hired when they take the certification courses that focus hoping you learn how to design by configuring is let's pretend you're now the construction worker. And I hand you a hammer and a screwdriver and the thing called the saw that I played with in wood chop 20 years ago, which I was a disaster with. And now I say, here, I've trained you on these tools. Now design me the hotel. Another person would laugh at me and say, I'm trained in construction, not design. That's why employers either want a program like ours or they're looking for experience because they know that 80% of what's taught in certifications is not what we actually do in real life. So get the skills and then pick whatever cloud you want. Now, when you finally do get certified on the cloud, I'd recommend it to be AWS or Azure. And not that it really matters, but the reason I recommend AWS or Azure and not Google, even though I love the Google Cloud, and that was my first cloud cert, the professional cloud architect, I prepared for it for two days. It was nothing exam. The reason is, is they're more ubiquitous. So most people are going to be using AWS or Azure or the combination of both before they use other clouds. So first learn the cloud. Now, when it comes to learning the names of a service, you know, pick one. I generally recommend Azure or AWS. I'm not sure if it's going to be AWS or Azure in the future. I used to be more AWS. I'm leaning towards Azure right now. Azure's messaging is really clear. Um, Microsoft's work in the data center and, put, and their and digital transformation experience is some of the best in the world. And because of that, I don't know whether I'd recommend AWS or Azure. Azure is rapidly capturing market share, and Azure technically has the most cloud revenues. Now, when you break it down, half of the reason that Azure's cloud revenues are so high is because of their smart cloud things versus their regular cloud things, and AWS is still a little bigger with regards to market share, but AWS or Azure, it doesn't really matter which one you feel like taking.
so you have to recertify after three years? Um, I don't really know what you're talking about. Um, so I don't know what you're, but I mean, if you're talking about being a doctor and doing your medical boards, AWS has their certification things, which are different than Azure certification things, which are different than Oracle certification things. I know a lot of people that do their certification, get their fresh job and never renew it again because it serves no purpose in their life after the first time. First time was to help them get an interview. After that, it's what's on your resume. So do you have to recertify? It's up to you. If you want to, is the certification helping your career? I generally try to keep up like two certifications, but I let most of mine go. And I don't put too many on my resume because if I have too many on my resume, if I wanted to apply for a job, it'll drop my salary dramatically because the problem is they're looking for an executive architect, a business transformation specialist, someone that's an expert in improving business performance. I get too many certifications, I look like a techie. That drops my salary in half and reduces my marketability. So it's all about what do you want to be? What's your goal? If I wanted to be an engineer, I might like to have three or four certifications, big professional certifications on my resume. If I'm an architect, I'm going to be looking for business skills like an MBA, different things, so or business acumen. And I've gotten people that didn't even graduate high school the first cloud architect job. I've got a video of that too. But that's the key. It's having the right skills. Omer, I don't know what job you're referring to. And yes, the reason I came out of retirement was as follows. I literally was retired, enjoying my retirement. I don't need to work. I don't have to. My team knows this. And what happened was I had been helping a community set up a nice blockchain data center in Kansas. I was retired. It was kind of fun. A lot of cryptocurrency mining. I was educating a community a long time ago when it was profitable and made sense. I advise people to get out of it before things changed, but that's neither here nor there. So anyway, I was working on that and I had met someone, his, his name was Nick, and he was such a good, fine guy. And he saw some of my interns come in and set up this data center. He's like, oh my God, Mike, I've never seen people like this. Where'd you get these 22 year olds? I said, I trained them all myself. And my friend Nick says to me, he's like, how about my son? My son's going to graduate with a college degree. And I said, well, great. What's it in? And he said, computer engineering. And I said, okay. And I said, what's your son want to do? And he says, make my son one of your people. So I said, well, best paying career now is architecture. So here's what I told my friend. I said, here's what I'm willing to do. I'm kind of busy, even though I'm in retirement with my physical therapy and other things. I said, I'm going to buy him the top three best selling courses out there. And I'm going to spend two to four hours with him every Friday, coaching him one-on-one. -on -one. So here's what I did. I bought him the three best-selling courses, and I was going to coach him on Friday. On the third day, this fine young man calls me up, and he says, Mike, he says, I set up an EC2 instance and an S3 bucket. What is it? And I said, what do you mean, what is it? He said, what actually is it that I'm doing? I know how to click through the boxes, but what is it? And I said to this kid, Nathan, I said, Nathan, I think you're being lazy. Nobody would ever put a course out there like a name where they just teach you how to configure something where they don't tell you what it is. And he says, watch the videos. Well, Umar, I watched these videos in horror. I looked at it and said, oh, my God, what did this training become? Basically, all unqualified people that had a microphone that would make some power plant slides and hide behind them, which architects don't do. And then I wanted to test my theory, Umar. And what did I do to test my theory? I interviewed a thousand AWS certified people that took these courses. Not a single one, no matter how many certifications they had, knew anything about architecture. They all knew how to configure, which architects do. None had the business acumen, none had the leadership skills, none had the sales skills, none had the executive presence, none had the emotional intelligence. They were unhirable. And then I made a video on how to get your first cloud architect job for free. It was just a YouTube video, and then I had about 50 emails in my inbox and my LinkedIn thing. It was like overnight, and people were begging me to create a program for them. And I've done, and now almost every day I've got a student that gets their first cloud architect job. Most don't have experience because they're properly trained and they have the skills that employers want. So 
come to my thing on Thursday and I'll tell you exactly what you can learn on your own. And you can learn these skills on your own. I don't care if you learn them with us or on your own. But I can tell you right now, if all you do is get an AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional, and that's your plan, you will not get hired as a solution architect. Why does everybody ask for five years of experience? Everyone wants five, 10 years experience. On my first job, they wanted 10 years in experience and I had zero. And I was hired as a senior engineer. The jobs that Coyote took over at AWS, the jobs that Yvonne Tamba took at AWS, they wanted five, 10 years experience. He had zero. The job Delroy Bat took, they wanted 10 years experience and he had zero. Daniel Boso, who's one of my favorites, he, I wish he was actually my son, I, I like the kids so much. And I recently texted him to invite him to my house in Florida. Here's the thing, he got hired by J.P. Morgan Chase, his last job was selling shoes at Nordstrom, and he didn't even graduate high school. So you don't have to buy my course, I don't need to sell it to you. But learn what they need, come to my How to Get Your First Cloud Job webinar, and you can buy my course and learn from us. Or you can do the training to do it on your own. Now, on your own, it'll go, cost you a good thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 to get these skills because you're going to need certain skills. And I'll even tell you where you can get them. I'm not interested in just selling courses. I'm interested in changing lives. And if you ask any of my students how their lives have changed after six-figure plus raises, which is pretty much normal for my average students, well, they'll tell you. I like to ask my students, and you can watch it on the videos that I interview people. In your first job now, could you afford to buy a four-bedroom house and two brand-new Mercedes and still save money at the end of the month? on just your salary alone, and they all say yes. And I say, that's my definition of success. So it's up to you what you want to do. But I'm just telling people how to get there. Hi, Mike. I was wondering about the opportunities for remote work as a cloud architect compared to on-site and hybrid. Well, Raymond, I've been an architect now for 25 years, and I've been working from home since 2001. Here's the thing. Architects may go where their customers are, which means, you know, it used to be two, 300,000 miles of travel. I wanted to live in Palm, Singer, well, actually, I wanted to live in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. If anybody heard of that, if not, it's think of West Palm Beach or Palm Beach itself, a couple miles away. And there were jobs in West Palm Beach, so I worked remotely for 20 some years. But at least I got to live in my place, go to the beach every single day when I wasn't traveling. Enjoy the Florida sunshine versus the cold Princeton, New Jersey weather, which I was used to, or the Philadelphia weather was working for that. So there's always remote opportunities. Now, if you're remote, you may be traveling. So let's talk about what remote is. If you are in New York City and you remote in, and you live in Princeton, New Jersey, you don't need to go to an office because there's incredible numbers of Fortune 100 companies headquartered right there that all need your critical services. Now, if you're in backwoods Mississippi, and I say this because Chris is from Mississippi. Hey, 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 hey. We have fields, not woods. <laughs> fields. Okay, fields in Mississippi. And if you're someplace there where it's a rural environment, look, you can still live there. But expect you're going to be traveling. Because unfortunately, in some of these wonderful places, they just have less, you know, multi-billion dollar multi i gotta travel to go to a movie theater so. exactly <laughs> but chris is from back there and that's why i picked mississippi he has to travel to go to a movie theater so it's not like he's in princeton new jersey and he's going to get in his car for 30 minutes and be in you know a 300 billion dollar company and talk about their cloud architecture but the point is he can still do it and he can do half of it working remotely over unified communications and the other half of it's going to involve travel but you can still do it it doesn't matter i've worked for my house in greece before as an architect Nobody even knew it. Delroy Bat, one of my students, love the guy. He's, he's another kid that I wish was my son. He visits me in Florida constantly. He uh, worked in Grenada for about two months remotely, which he totally loves. That it changed his life. So that's the key is, yes, you can definitely work remotely. But if you're really far away from things, um, keep that in the back of your mind. Sir, I am a three-year student, want to make my career in developing OS. What could I do for DevOps development or Android development to make a career in data science with a basic salary? Okay, AJ, you just talked about three different careers, and they're all very different. There's a DevOps career, there's a data science career, and there's an Android development career. And if you try to do all three, you will fail at all three because you won't be able to learn any one of them significantly. So if you can tell us what you need to learn, 
it can guide you. But, you know, a data science career is a massive career in and of itself. And by the way, the hardest jobs to get, even with a PhD in advanced mathematics, they're, they're great jobs, but they're very hard to get. Now, a DevOps career is one thing, an Android developer is another thing, and you're basically asking, how do I become an airplane pilot, a physician, and a lawyer all at the same time? So, AJ, if you tell us the career that you desire, I can help you with that. In the meantime, let's go to another question. We've got 20 minutes we can go today. John Bunn, I'm leaning towards cloud security engineer role over architect because you have a lot of technical background. What are your thoughts on the CCSP from ISC2? I wouldn't waste my time on it. Now, if you want to do engineering because you like engineering, great. But it has nothing to do with what your experience is. I would never pick a career based on my experience. I would pick a career based upon my goal. When I was practicing internal medicine and I decided I love networking, I decided to become a network engineer. Now, everybody tell me your experiences in medicine, you can't do that. I heard a very stupid reason in the world why I couldn't be successful. And I said, I'm going to be a network engineer. Everybody laughed at me and they said, you're going to do this help desk thing for a couple of years and then a network admin thing. I said, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to learn somebody else's job because I think it's going to make me good at my job. So I went and became a senior network engineer with my first job, not even a network engineer. WorldCom, which is now Verizon, had network engineer one, two, three, four. I was in network engineer four as my first job. And the people that I worked with with two and three and four years of experience were not network engineers two and three because I was focused and I had the right skills. So my thoughts that the CISSP is a very good exam because it covers security both on and off the cloud. And in real life, in real life, it's never about just you know, one thing. So it's never going to be all on the cloud, which is why the CCSP doesn't make sense. It's going to be in a hybrid cloud, the data center, the cloud. So I do like the CISSP, very cloud security architects. But you know, cloud security engineers, you got to further subdefine that. Do you want to be in the ethical hacking penetration side of it? In which case, things like a CEH master or an offensive security professional make more sense? Or do you want to be doing, you know, back-end defensive engineering, in which case the CISSP makes more sense? The CISSP is more of an architecture certification. The CCSP is still an architecture-based certification, meaning more of the design of the security things as opposed to building it. But uh, your future is not dependent upon your past. Your future is dependent upon your goals. So I would never recommend you pick a security engineer job just because you have technical background. I recommend you pick a security engineer job because you like being hands-on on the tech. That's what I'm looking for. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. You want a career in DevOps. What's a roadmap for it? Realistically speaking, first, AJ, you need to be a good software engineer. And then after that, it's about learning the DevOps tools. Jenkins, Spinnaker, Git, and all these many other DevOps tools on and off the cloud. Now, beyond that, we're also dealing with some infrastructure and code kind of things. Kind of keep that in the back of your mind. We're dealing with a lot of Kubernetes knowledge. My friend Sandeep Daz actually does a lot of work with training DevOps engineers, and that's truly his specialty, so he's a better person to ask for that. But kind of keep it in the back of your mind. Um, this is what we're typically talking to, talking about, and that's how to get there. And I, I'm, I'm going to put a link to Sandeep's LinkedIn profile so that they can get the right. He sends yeah. architecture people to me because he knows that's what I say. <laughs> And I send DevOps people to him because that's his world. And he's a great at DevOps and a really nice guy. Cash, could you transition to a DevOps trial after a solution architect? Well, yes, you could, Cash. It would take you extreme training. So as an architect, we're a solution designer. We're business executives. As DevOps engineers, they need to be code. They need to be doing Terraform, Kubernetes, and things. Now, Cash, I'm going to tell you this. 
if you go from a solution architect role to a DevOps career, it's going to cost you basically 50% of your pay because architects earn so much more than DevOps engineers. And if you wanted to do that, of course you could because, you know, your past doesn't define your future. Now, to go from an architect, so as an architect to a DevOps engineer would take about as much effort as it would take from going from scratch to be an architect because it's learning a completely, completely, completely unrelated career. So for example, Okash, an architect doesn't code. An architect doesn't configure. An architect isn't hands-on on Linux. An architect isn't hands-on on anything other than design. A DevOps engineer is all about being a software engineer first and then learning DevOps tools. So it would be about as hard to, to go from DevOps engineer so to solution architect as it would be solution architect to DevOps engineer. But here's the thing, Cash. If you don't enjoy being an architect or you hate it, then of course you could become a DevOps engineer. But you're going to need just as much retraining to go from architect to DevOps engineer as you would from DevOps engineer architect. It's like saying I've been an airplane pilot for the last 10 years and now I want to be a doctor. Yes, you could do it. You go to medical school. Or you could be a medical professional like me that said, hey, I want to go to the network and do it. But it's a completely different skill set. You're going to have to start from scratch. And if you don't like being an architect, I strongly encourage you to do DevOps engineering. But understand that people aren't going to do this for financial security. They're going to do it because they don't love being an architect. They don't love designing, presenting, and spelling. And so on. John Brown, how can an architect speak confidently about technology if they're not a techie with sufficient background? I think you're missing the whole point. You mentioned some WAN networking terms that are not introductory. Actually, John, those WAN networking things that I talked about are very basic and very junior level introductory um, compared to what we're talking about as an architect. I'm not saying you don't need technical competency, even though you'll never use it as an architect. I'm saying you need to understand how things work and not how to configure them. For the architect, you need to understand how things work. Now, John, you, you got to remember this. The architect's not going to be designing this thing themselves, ever. You know, here's what's going to happen. Architects are all about our strong fundamentals and how the pieces and parts work together. We're going to go get talk to the customer that their business requirements, their legal requirements, their technical requirements, we're going to come back to our team and build a team of 40, 50 people. And we're going to get each person to design their specialty of our architecture. We're going to then talk to the people and bring in external consultants and guidance and talk to specific vendors outside of our cloud people, come up with a solution, which is going to take us potentially hundreds of hours of work and research to develop. And then we're going to go talk confidently about something that we've just had hundreds of hours working on. The same way a lawyer prepares for a legal case. And each case is different. They do their research. The same way when I was a management consultant, which was really the architect job, and I worked for a company that I didn't know anything about, I researched the company and became an expert on those things that I was doing. So there's the key. Now, John, I think you need to remember, what is the job of the architect? It's not the tech. It's how do we transform a customer's business with technology? So for us, the reason architects don't get hired, the reason we see it every day, is they're focused on the tech like an engineer. And then they want to be hired as an architect, and they just can't. They can't because they don't have the right skills. You know, somebody from AWS, one of the directors, came into one of my classes last June and said, I love Go Cloud Careers for the following reason. They're teaching the soft skills, the executive presence, the C-level C -level communications, the ROI modeling, the business acumen, because that accurately represents the architect's job as opposed to the tech stuff that's being taught because we don't want a techie. And they speak to hiring managers every day or when Chris and I speak to CIOs and CTOs and CEOs of other business, they come to us and say, we interviewed one of your students, they declined taking the offer, but we need more of your people. They say, look, Mike, we don't want techies. Chris, how often do you hear that? We're not looking for a techie. We're not looking for an engineer. We're looking for someone that knows how to design something and can lead the team. Chris, you've heard that before, right? Oh, yeah. Every time we meet with someone that's looking for, for positions. You know, there, there's one time that sticks out in mind and they, they gave us a list of 14 things they're looking for and two of them were technical yes. out of the 14. And they were kind of like, the, and they were at the bottom of the list. 
Exactly. And that's what we see and hear from employers. And that's why mental health techs get hired as cloud architects. Customer service reps were getting hired as cloud architects. Now, we work with engineers and get them hired as cloud architects, too. But let me tell you, and I started out as an engineer. It takes a lot of retraining to forget that engineering and not focus on the tech and focus on the business. So it all depends on what you want to be. If you want to be an engineer, focus on the tech. It's awesome. If you want to be an architect, focus on the business. It's your job. on TV, can you just learn the cloud on your PC or can you purchase service for learning purposes? You now, the, here's the problem, Cleon TV. If you just do stuff on the cloud, the whole cloud is built for you, so you're really not going to be able to get the learning that you need. If you do it on your PC, you're going to need to get some serious PC hardware. So what we recommend for people to get real cloud experience, and every student in our program does this. Now, if you were to buy the tech yourself, Cleon, in the U.S., it's going to cost about $2,000. I think you're in Cyprus from Cameroon, if I remember correctly. And in Cyprus, this system is going to cost four to $10,000. That's why we give every student access to a full server in our data center to do these labs. But what you're going to need is a server between three and five years old. And the server is going to need a minimum of 16 cores, a Xeon server, ideally 24 cores or more. You're going to need a minimum of 128 gigs of RAM in the server. And then you're going to need at least three SSD drives in RAID 0 or NVMe drives. We use NVMe drives for our students because it's faster and gives better performance and it's more reliable. And then on this, this is where you can set up a VMware hypervisor for pure type 1 server virtualization versus the type 2 you would do on your PC. And you can't just install VMware ESXi on anything. It needs to be the, the right kind of hardware. And then you can build some virtual machines, build some Linux file servers, build some Windows file servers, build a firewall, build a VPN concentrator, set up the Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP kind of stacks on your own hardware, set up an Active Directory server, you know, set up a lot of different kinds of servers, and then build a cloud for yourself. But to build a cloud, you're going to need some serious compute powder. And that's why we even have the Cloud Architect Career Development Program Basic, because for people that want to be able to do these labs, most people can't afford the $2,000 to do the labs. And that's why we created that program, which is when it's on sale is $350. I initially created it just to give people lab access. And then what we did is we took all the recorded content from our main program and the recorded versions of our class and popped it in there. And that way we could produce the course at the lowest cost that could help anybody in the world get hired. And they've been getting hired from this program, the basic program. Look, our, our live program's much better. But because you're in there, you can participate in classes, you can build a team, we can interview and coach you directly. But that's why I built that course, because that way somebody can do all these labs and get a complete cloud computing education for one-sixth of the cost of buying the server. And just the server is only one part of the education that goes into cloud computing. That's why we do it, Cleon. Jasna, AWS is recruiting for the Solutions Architect Associate Early Career Program. Will it be wise to apply for the program even though you're not fresh out of college and still haven't finished the architect course? Well, I don't know which course you're actually referring to. Now, Jasna, I will tell you that we have many people that don't need, they get hired directly into AWS and not into the associate architect program. And they're always recruiting for this program. So the key is it's never wise to interview for a job that you're not ready for. Meaning if you can design, present and sell the solution, go interview with them. But if you can't, you know what happens when you interview for a job that you're not ready for? You don't do well in the interview. The company puts a big mark X on your name and they'll never talk to you again in the future. So I recommend you interview for jobs that you're capable of doing. Don't worry about what's in the job description. Know what the real job is. And then if you can do the real job, then apply for it. But I recommend you never apply for jobs that you don't have the capability to win. And if you're taking our training, I don't know how far you in there or in the training. I don't know if you've been in class. I haven't in class where you're doing things. Are you able to design the things on your own? Keep that in the back of your mind. When you can design these architectures on your own, yeah, supply. Deepak, I'm a fresher. I have one year of experience. Really wanted to get into cloud computing, but your problem in deciding which course or field to choose. Deepak, it's based on you. 
What do you want to do? Do you want a position where you're going to design, present, and sell things to customers? That's a hybrid executive, hybrid technology. Then you want to be a cloud architect. Do you want to be that hands-on techie that codes and configures all day? Then you want to be a cloud engineer. So what do you want to do? That's the answer. What do you want to do? If you want to be able to do the job, do, pick the job of the dream. Pick what's going to make you happy. And there's no other way to plan it other than do the job that you desire to do. Because you're going to be doing it for a long period of time, 30, 40 years. And you're going to be doing it. You're going to be spending as much time at work, if not more, than you actually are at home. So make sure you can do the job. You want to do the job. You're going to thrive at that job. So that's my answer for you. What do you want to do? Now, at this point, we have to end today's sessions a little early. Normally, we go to noon, but we've got the free AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Bootcamp this week. And we, our team needs to do all the back-end work to make sure you have a successful, wonderful, and completely free learning experience. Look forward to seeing you there. If you, if you haven't liked the video, please do so. If you're not a subscriber and haven't hit the bell to our channel, please do so. And I look forward to seeing you at noon today. And give me a hashtag of your favorite career, Cloud Architecture Solution Architect, and see you all at noon. Join us on Thursday for the completely free How to Get Your First Cloud Job webinar. If you're looking to get your first cloud job, take advantage of our special 30% off special security awareness code, uh, security code, S-E-C-U-R-I-T-Y. Sierra, Sierra, Echo, Charlie, Uniform, Romeo, India, Tango, Yankee, for those of you that prefer phonetic spelling. And uh, download the completely free update to the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate and Professional eBook and see the rest of you in class, at least our public class on the Certified Solution Architect Associate today. Take care, everyone.